சார் யூ கேன் ஸ்டார்ட் ஆக்சுவலி லைவ் வந்துடும் அவ்வளோதான் ப்ராசஸ் ஆகிட்டுருக்கு கொடுத்துட்டு நான் இப்போ நான் எல்லாரையும் அட்மிட் பண்ணிட்டோமா சார் ஆ பண்ணிடலாம்ப்பா பட் அட்மிட் பண்ணிடலாம்ல மேடம் YouTube. sir uh, you can see the picture okay okay yes okay okay one second okay the under participation are came into zoom sir now shall okay. i the as well i lock the meeting sir ama meet uh, lock panni idu pa lock panni idu we will start the okay. session Okay now we can start sir Okay YouTube linda veliya vandala illa YouTube run aagudha just neenga come out panniringa all the now you can start sir session is going on YouTube in online you can start Okay okay Yeah Good morning everyone. We are all uh, here for the virtual FDP on uncovering piazza for effective teaching. Our college uh, principal, the most respected of our fraternity has been the instrumental in launching this program for the first time by the Department of Botany. and you all know that it is corona pandemic all of us are locked in you should say inside the house but the learning ecosystem has been changing and we have to match with the pandemic of uh, corona as well as this uh, digital pandemic i should say everywhere webinar is going on so all the participants who are all interested in equipping with the digital technology have come together and are participating and we are all happy to welcome all the participants and uh, the resource person who has been kind enough to de- give the demonstration and educate us all on the piasa app which is a mobile app uh, uh, he is uh, professor head computer science and data science of bishop heber college he has a lot of credits and he has been um, the instructor for various uh, webinar courses 
especially piazza is his uh, fourth i think and he is also acclaimed you can google and see without uh, taking much of your time our uh, principal the academic giant who is a rare combination a blended personality both teaching and uh, research she is uh, uh, she is having patent to her credit she is having hundreds of publications she is having three decades of teaching service all along she has been serving our uh, student community and she has also visited several countries on research front she is uh, well known among our uh, uh, college professors for her uh, excellence in teaching and research i request the principal to deliver presidential address welcome madam good morning can you hear me sir <clears throat> good morning and wish you all a very pleasant experience during this virtual fdp program uh, uncovering psr for effective teaching conducted by presidency college for the first time uh, now um, i must thank the dr chitti babu for his wonderful efforts he has been working day and night for the past one week uh in fact we were changing platforms after platforms to accommodate 400 and odd participants who are with us today he says we have participants from six states and 12 to 15 different colleges from uh, the city and we want to uh, include everybody that means we needed a big platform in fact presidency college has a cisco platform and still we were very hesitant to use that platform because uh the wonderful lecture by uh, or the uh, the presentation by dr raj kumar should reach every one of the participants so yesterday night you won't believe yesterday night we shifted the platform from cisco to zoom and then from zoom to live stream so that kind of effort was taken by dr chitti babu and his team and body department to uh, to start this program for the benefit of all of us here uh i don't have to introduce presidency college nor do i have to tell anything about this prestigious college in person but uh, presidency college always tries to take a lead in the state for very very important activities and one such activity is going on today for all our viewers uh we are having a very very pleasant personality here professor gay rajkumar he is an em eminent personality of international reputation in teaching and research activities um uh, he is from uh, krishna palli college and i understand when i read through his uh, bio data in um, in in net it was really amazing sir so after all your internal national experiences you are back to your own college where you studied and you are trying to extend your uh, your teaching and research facilities to the students of your college it is to be congratulated and um, the next is about the piazza so i want to tell something about piazza the piazza was started in uh, 2009 uh, in in stanford university by by none other than uh, one uh, a student of that university uh, and she is puja she is puja and uh, she was just working on some projects and she found, she wanted to have an interface for these students who ever takes this uh, uh, homework back home once the students go back home they have to do their homework and due to so many difficulties they may not be able to do and then they have to refer to the classmates or the instructor to complete their homework now uh, then she found she came up with a wonderful idea why not we have a a platform where you can just post the question get the answer from the group of students and the instructors complete the homework in time and go on so that's how they started this in 2009 and now the headquarters is in california uh, so many 5 million students are there and uh, uh, in 2011 incidentally barry wells college i conducted a international conference i had a person from california a very senior scientist he gave a lecture and then in the end of the lecture he told madam do you have this uh, piazza here so that if the research scholars have some doubts they can contact me sincerely sir i didn't even know what is piazza piazza at that point of time and later on we have to mail to him to find out what it is and then we came to know that it is kind of a platform where research scholars or any students can interact with their with their uh, instructors and uh, they can do their work from home i think it took a long time uh, for this platform to enter into india and today we are very happy that uh, this particular program is being conducted from presidency college 
and uh, I'm very, very sure that all of you will take home a wonderful message from our uh, uh, mentor who's going to take over the session right now. I'm not going to talk for a long time, though I really like to. Uh, but we have 400 student, uh, people waiting to listen to Dr. Rajkumar, and he will take you through a journey that's really going to change the mode you're going to look at the students, the way you're going to teach for, from, from today. And he's going to inspire you at all levels. And I wish you all very best. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, madam. Thank you yes. for your wonderful, wonderful speech and uh, nice motivation uh, for the participants. Dear participants, we all know that we have been distanced, socially distanced because of the corona pandemic. So also the academic ecosystem has been distanced to us. The doors of the classrooms are locked, but the, the digital technology has opened the gateways for us to reach our student community. We may not know when will the institution start, but we need to have contact with our own uh, uh, learners. So the learners uh, should not be deprived of the uh, benefit of technology. And uh, there is no doubt uh, as our madam has uh, prophetically stated yesterday when we were meeting, when we don't adopt this technology, we will perish. That is true. As madam was telling, when I googled about the Piazza, it states there are 200 universities already using. There are uh, thousands of people already, they are uh, learning through their peers using Piazza. So question and answer patterns are available. So why not we explore and uh, take advantage of this system and use it for our student community? Because after all, we cannot uh, stop from uh, teaching, uh, truly speaking. Uh, almost three to four months, uh, we have been deprived of uh, classrooms and teaching. So let us all uh, take advantage of this technology. And I thank the madam, uh, thank our madam for giving uh, us this uh, opportunity and permission to conduct the uh, FDP. Now I, uh, I invite Dr. Rajkumar, who has uh, been, as madam told, who has been very uh, successful in uh, conducting this uh, FDP. Uh, in various uh, platforms. Once I invited him, he has readily accepted. Yes, it is my pleasure. I will uh, deliver uh, this uh, uh, webinar on FDP. Actually, he said, um, it is not a problem for me, for, uh, in his own words, he said, it's not a problem for me to speak in any platform. So such a nice person who is accommodative and adjustable with all the uh, digital platforms, but still his interest continues to uh, equip our own community, teaching community. Uh, Dr. Rajkumar uh, uh, is very kind and we all appreciate his uh, uh, effort. So thank you, Professor, on, our, on behalf of all the participants. Now I invite you to deliver your uh, lectures. Thank you. Okay, so so great. So good morning, everybody. So it's so I'm happy to be here this morning to talk to you on this interesting platform, Piazza. And first of all, I thank uh, uh, Principal Ma'am. Uh, thank you, Ma'am, for inviting me to deliver this workshop on Piazza. So it's really so happy to be here this morning. And also, I would like to thank. Uh, Dr. Chitty, Chitty Babu is uh, head of the Department of uh, Plant uh, Biology and uh, Plant uh, Biotechnology. Uh, so thank you, sir, for organizing this workshop. I know it's not very easy to conduct uh, an online workshop like this. It is really painful and it takes a lot of time. So I know there are a lot of hiccups. Uh, it's, I already experienced all these hiccups uh, in my lifetime. So whenever I organize any sort of webinars, so don't worry, it's all part of the game. So we need to survive with all these hiccups. So uh, it's not an issue at all. And then I also thank uh, all the participants uh, who have been patient enough to be here this morning and wait for a long time. So we were supposed to ta start our webinar on time, but uh, it was delayed a little bit. So it's not an issue. So thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your interest to be uh, this morning here, and uh, which is going to be a really useful session for all of you. Uh, 
so i'm sure i promise you that within 30 minutes of time i'll make you master this technology and you will start jumping uh, into the platform to complement your lectures uh, to be more meaningful uh, so uh, uh, for the past uh, decade technology has entered into our classrooms in various ways in one way uh, hardware innovations are happening so we should uh, see everywhere uh, there are uh, interactive whiteboards there are smart boards uh, there are ar vr uh, headphones uh, for example uh, augmented reality virtual reality headsets and uh, there are sensors everywhere we call them as iot sensors so these are different hardware innovations that are already entered into our classroom uh, on the other side uh, uh, university started to explore experiment different uh, teaching pedagogies uh, for example we might already have experience uh, outcome based uh, education of course in india nowadays everybody started to using outcome based education so we are expected to specify what is the learning outcome student learning outcomes so that is what our outcome based education it's not enough to say simply uh, what is the objective of this course so we have to be very precise about what is the learning outcome what are the learning outcomes from this particular course that i expect my students to achieve and also there are other technologies uh, like uh, flip the classroom so these are some of the interesting uh, teaching pedagogies that university started to explore of late and addition to that uh, we have other mode of interesting software applications so there are hardware innovations there are uh, teaching innovations and also there are so many software applications that really help to complement our lecture and psa is one such application that is going to be explored in this particular talk so let me share my screen a uh, host will you please uh, uh, enable my screen sharing yeah sure sir sure sir one second so now you can do uh, so dr rajkumar sir you can do you can share yes. okay right good uh well yeah so i would like to start this session with a question a uh, question about uh, blackboards so the blackboard in our classroom can be 5 years old the pla blackboard in our classroom can be 10 years old 15 years old 20 years old but can our teaching style be 5 year old can our teaching style be 10 year old Are fifteen years old, or twenty years old? So this is the question I would like to pose in front of all of you. The question is: Are we using the same style of delivery for the past five years? Are we using the same style of teaching for the past ten years, fifteen years? Or can you say, no, I am not using the same style for the past five years. I am not following the same teaching style for the past ten years. i am sure that all of us we know that we are innovating our teaching every day every semester every year but the problem is our learners the students that we taught 5 years ago are not the same set of students now they are completely different the students whom we taught 10 years before are completely different set of students from now so the problem is the students are completely different so i call them as gen z students students who are born in the year 2000 and after they are gen z students similarly i classify students as gen y student gen x student 
So you can just assume students who are born from 1990 to 2000, they are Gen Y. Similarly, 10 years before, they are called as Gen X students. So students are completely different. So we call them as digital kids. They are simply digital kids. So they are born with digital gadgets. So our teaching should be completely, I would say, forgotten and learning should be completely followed. So we need to completely move on from teaching side to learner side, from teaching side to the learning side. So I would like to ask you, how can we just really make ensure the student completely learn? So considering Gen Nisa students. So that is the objective of this particular uh, session. So I will just uh, quickly explain within 60 minutes. So what is Piazza? Why do we need to really worry about Piazza? So what are the different features of Piazza? And I will also give a walkthrough how to just really create our courses in Piazza platform and also make uh, the course completely online using this uh, Piazza platform. I will also tell you something more about uh, what are the other contemporary products that we should really worry about. And then finally, I will end this session with a brief question answer uh, session. Okay, so the first question is that, do we need to really worry about Piazza? And uh, I would like to highlight some of the important uh, reasons uh, that will really motivate us to move on to this Piazza platform. The one is called uh, resource management. Throughout our lectures, we create so many resources. Throughout the entire semester, we create so many resources. We create lecture slides, we create uh, homeworks, we create assignments, we create handouts, we create lab manual, lab solutions, and there are many, many, many resources that we create for the entire semester. And how do we disseminate these resources to students? Obviously, most of us will use, obviously, uh, uh, email or like Gmail or any sort of email to disseminate our resources. So we disseminate all these different resources through email. But I, there is a big problem I face. Many times I forget where I just, uh, when did I disseminate this resource? So we don't know whether I have shared my lecture one slide to students. Have I shared my uh, assignment to my students? I completely, I, I don't know, I completely I forgot. It's not only that, uh, I forgot where I store my resources. Did I save my resource in my laptop, in my desktop, or in my, uh, for example, other medium? I don't know. Not only that, I forgot the complete uh, folder where I have stored my resources. I forgot the file name of all those different resources. So these are some of the problems I face. So what do I need to do? I need to really just ensure, go back to my Gmail, go back to my email, and then check where and when I just shared these resources. So this is a big problem. And at times I think that, can I have some products that will really help me to organize all these different resources? So that was a big question as instructor I have in my mind. Also, uh, all my resources are not shared in one go. So I need to share those resources one by one according to the different timeline. Maybe I need to share my slide on a particular date and then I need to share homework, then slide two, and then maybe like assignment one, then for example, slides of lecture three and so on. So there is inherently a chronological order among these different resources that are to be shared to my students. Many times, you know, I don't keep track of all these different resources. Did I send already 
the lecture one slides on a particular date on a particular time i don't know again how do we solve it i need to go back to my email and then ensure that uh, all these different resources are shared according to the different timeline so this is another big problem that as instructors we always face so obviously we always think like can a particular product is there any software product software app maybe mobile app or desktop app web app that is available that will really help me to just uh, make my life very easy and finally another important reason for piasa is a collaborative learning so that is something is missing in our uh, in our classrooms i would say so obviously there are various reasons where collaborative learn learning never happens in classrooms maybe our lecture time is limited could be like 60 minutes or 50 minutes maybe like 2 hours that's very limited so not many students can ask questions we don't have time to answer all these different questions and there are various reasons in addition to that many of our students are shy they are shy of asking questions they always think that if my question is wrong will other students laugh at me so obviously it's better to keep mum than asking questions so this is a type of uh, uh, mentality of students everywhere so always wherever you go whoever you teach students are always shy so they don't want to ask questions but that cannot prevent me from collaborative learning so what is collaborative learning collaborative learning means to enable students to learn not only from instructors but also from other students so we want students to ask questions so that the questions will be answered by instructors not only from them but also from other students so this is called the collaborative learning so this will really improve the learning of our students so obviously uh, this is the primary reason with which piasa has been designed so it was emerged 10 years ago like a question answer platform so uh, in this webinar our focus is going to be on piasa and uh, how piasa can solve all of my problems as instructors right so then coming to popularity is it uh, popular how far piasa is popular yeah is highly popular i would say so piasa is available as a web application as a mobile application so you can use any of your browser like firefox like internet explorer and then you can access the web app from your laptop from your tab or desktop and it's also available as a mobile application so you can install piasa on your mobile phone and then you can use it not only that piasa is used by students so students can create uh, piasa accounts they can access your resources and uh, then uh, piasa is a very popular application across globe this is a statistics of 2015 50000 professors are using piasa from 2000 universities across 90 countries so this is the typical statistics of piasa 5 years ago already 5 years before 50000 professors have started using uh, piasa so it's really popular it's really useful and also as i said in the previous slide it's the number one product for question answering so which enables students to ask questions and uh, other students and other instructors can respond to the questions above all it's free so when i checked piasa 3 years before i wanted to use piasa i checked that time and it was a paid software so 3 years before i was simply using my google classroom classroom as the platform to reach out to my students because piasa was a paid third party software which we need to purchase so last year last before one year i think piasa became open source now it's free everybody every instructor can use piasa for free so this is a good thing 
that's why now uh, we are starting to really look at explore piasa as the complementing uh, teaching uh, aid for our regular classes well so just quickly i will just uh, tell you some of the features of piasa uh, piasa is a platform where you can organize your resources you can organize your slides you can organize your audio videos or homeworks uh, your uh, lab solutions your assignments projects everything uh, in a in a timely manner so it's very easy to share those resources you can also assign uh, a date when the resource has to be announced to students and what's the deadline it's very easy you can easily set the deadline for every activity student so that students will be able to submit uh, those assignments submit those uh, homeworks everything on time and uh, secondly uh, tracking uh, teaching assistants uh, tracking other fellow instructors is very easy and tracking means we are not uh, uh, checking so we were really and we want to ensure that uh, learning happens properly whether students are asking questions whether other instructors and other teaching assistants are replying to the questions of course you are the lead instructor and uh, if the a question answering is not proper you can also jump into and then start answering those uh, questions and that's how piasa is very powerful just really to ensure that teaching and learning happens properly so it's very to just follow up with other instructors and then other important feature is a wiki style editing of uh, piasa so that means like uh, students will ask questions and uh, suppose we can't always expense expect student to ask questions uh, correctly that might be different uh, misinterpretations ambiguity so students cannot be able to formulate these questions properly other students can edit the questions you as an instructor can also edit uh, uh, the questions so that's the idea of wiki style anybody can edit anything else submitted by anybody so questions can be edited your answers can be edited so that's the other powerful wiki style of piasa what will happen suppose if this feature is not available then the question if it is ambiguous that cannot be modified that cannot be edited so that's a big issue so we want the questions to be properly formulated edited style and answers can also be properly edited so this is another interesting feature of uh, piasa and also filtering is the next feature so you can filter questions you can filter answers you can delay your answers you can really wait for uh, some other students to submit uh, answers to reflect on the questions all these th different kinds of filtering is possible with piasa i will show you how to really filter your content and then yeah so knowledge sharing i told you about the collaborative learning so knowledge management knowledge creation knowledge sharing they're all very important component of uh, any learning uh, uh, methodology i would say because so you teach one group of students this year and next year you are offering the same course to different group of students some juniors so what is knowledge sharing so knowledge sharing is the way of preserving all the questions all the answers all the discussions that happened in the previous year to also to the current year so suppose if this sort of platform does not exist means what whatever the questions that were asked by students in the previous years are not available to the current students so those questions and those answers were missing so students will not be able to learn all those different previous experiences shared by students in the previous years so piasa comes for your rescue so it enables us as instructors to create knowledge by way of question and answers and also to preserve in piasa and share to the students of the following year so this is what knowledge sharing and this is how piasa helps us to really archive our knowledge 
to the future students and finally you can create questions so here we call them as post post has three different types i will tell you more about that question is one type of post so you can create post using a uh, later kind of editing so later is a popular editor for creating questions so same editing feature is available for instructors who use psr so what is the beauty here many mathematics professors will love it i would say because mathematics professors would like to create so many questions and if you simply use other products those products do not support this sort of editing equations so that's a beautiful thing in piasa so not only equations you can also share videos audios images html files web pages everything so piasa supports all these different kinds of data to be shared to all our students so these are some of the some of the features that will really highlight uh, us about piasa and uh, piasa is a worthy product for instructors to really explore and then use it for our classes okay so how to create uh, courses in piasa it's simply a five step process so in step 1 you simply create your class so you need to go login into piasa and then uh, create your class and secondly you need to invite students to register to sign up into your course you also need to invite other instructors and other teaching assistants for for your course so you might worry why should i invite other instructors and many times you know one course is not offered by one instructor maybe two instructors three instructors offer the same course probably i may teach units 1 2 and 3 and other instructor may teach unit 4 and 5 so you as a lead instructor you can invite other instructors also to sign up for your course and suppose you have some teaching assistants you can invite them also and then you need to upload all the resources into piasa into your course so you need to upload your lecture slides you need to upload your uh, assignments projects and lab code and everything so archive all those resources suppose if you don't have a complete set of resources doesn't matter you can just upload maybe slides of lecture 1 and later you can upload slides of lecture 2 slides of lecture 3 and whenever you create your own resources you can archive them and then you need to configure your question answer features so remember piasa is is the most powerful technology is the most powerful software to ensure knowledge sharing and knowledge management so we are much more read, read about the students response their students learning how do they learn what are the different questions that student ask what are the different answers so you have so many different features that you can set for your course and finally now it's a time for you to invite all our students and other instructors to just get into the system so you post a message so the message is sent by email to all other students and it's also sent uh, to their mobile phones so uh, this is a very simple uh, course management step so just remember these are the five steps that i should uh, follow up whenever i create a new course uh, in psr platform yeah so this is uh, another important uh, feature so Uh, how do i really analyze the impact of my course and piasa provides a 
uh, facility for uh, analyzing or to understand the statistics about uh, course. So you can really check uh, how many students already signed up, how many students viewed uh, a particular resource, how many students are ready to view those resources, how many of them have posted uh, questions, how many answers were posted, how many answers were posted but not answered so far, uh, what is the activity for uh, for a week, uh, daily, and uh, for a month, we can get all those different statistics about your course progress through these uh, statistics. Uh, and also, you can also uh, follow up whether students are able to follow your classes, so whether they learn all the facts. Uh, so you can really ensure the reading list so that students are expected to really go through that reading list and also ensure uh, that before they post any questions, they need to be familiar with all the different topics. And uh, uh, these are the different ways of analyzing the different uh, components uh, of the course, and that is possible uh, with Piazza. Fine, so it's a uh, demo time. So, yeah. So all of you, please. Uh, yeah, so please uh, use your mobile phone and then uh, type uh, www.psr.com. And uh, if you use your uh, laptop or desktop, okay, open the browser and type uh, www.psr.com. So, so go to your browser. So type uh, psr.com. So you might see the screen. So you can see there are uh, two different uh, buttons. One is a green button that says uh, students uh, get started. So you have to inform your students to uh, click this button and then sign up. And uh, now, uh, we want to create a new page for our course. So this is the second button for us. So professors and TAs get started. So you can click this, okay. So yeah, you are taken into the PSA homepage. You might see this sort of screen. Okay, so I hope all of you, uh, you are in this screen. And uh, now you have to select your school. So you can type your school, you can type your university, your college name. If your university or your college is already uh, there in Piazza, then you can, uh, uh, you can just uh, select that info, otherwise you can create uh, uh, 
your new school, maybe let me type uh, presidency college. Yeah, so so for example, now you can see you are into this uh, screen. So where your college name, university name, name will appear. Okay, so like this, right? Uh, professor, sorry to interact with you. Actually, we can't see anything, Professor. Only we are uh, looking at uh, demo time only. Yes. So let me go into my page. Okay, right. So now I hope that uh, you already know uh, how to get into Piazza. So simply type uh, piazza.com in your mobile phone or in your uh, desktop or des uh, your laptop. So you register yourself uh, by selecting your uh, university or your college. If your university name or college name doesn't appear, uh, don't worry, you can type. So your school, your university will be added to Piazza. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, no, no sir. Uh, sorry, sorry to interact with you, professor. Uh, yes. We are not able to see your uh, Piazza, professor. Actually, the screen is not showing. Okay, one second, sir. Okay. Is, sir, is it visible now? Yes, Professor. Now I, we can see. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Right, right, sir. So, uh, what I said uh, uh, previously was like I requested you okay, to enter into Piazza by typing piazza.com in a browser. And uh, now you can see there are two different buttons. Uh, one is uh, a button for the students. So students will create their account by clicking this uh, green button. And uh, professors, uh, we uh, will use this button to, uh, to sign up. So we need to click this button. So it takes us to the Piazza uh, homepage. And now you need to select your uh, university or school. Uh, suppose, uh, uh, if your university or school is not already added to Piazza, you can just create uh, your school by typing the name of your college or, or university. Uh, okay, so for example, let me type uh, presidency college. Okay, so just now I created, so it appears, so I can click this one. So once you click, uh, you are into your college uh, PS account. Okay, so your college name will appear, and uh, this is the uh, first uh, home page for your your college or for your university. Okay. Yeah. Now I move into my PSA space. So this is my uh, PSA page. Okay. So this is the menu bar. Here you might see there is a, a drop down menu. So when I click it, it uh, displays all my courses that I already used uh, uh, for the past two semesters. Okay, all the courses uh, that I offered uh, using Piazza is listed here. <coughs> you can see uh, a course object oriented systems, uh, problem solving using Python and R, practical machine learning and machine learning and so on. So. Suppose this will be empty when you uh, use for the first time, and now you need to create uh, your class. So you, here you see a hyperlink, create a new class. So you have to click this, uh, this link. And uh, 
below there is another link that says uh, clone this class that means uh, suppose uh, you offered a particular course uh, last year and you are teaching the same course this year as well then you don't have to create a new course you can simply copy those uh, courses for the present year as well by cloning it so you can simply click uh, clone this class so that all those uh, resources and everything will be copied to the current year okay so now what we are going to do is to create a new course so let me click this hyperlink create a new class yeah so now it shows my college names uh, already okay it's used by by me uh, so you can select the term click on this uh, button drop down button so you can see so many different uh, terms these are the predefined terms that uh, already being included in this platform you can also use different uh, term for example if you like to specify semester 1 semester 2 you can do that or semester even semester you can do that okay so generally we can use uh, summer and then winter to specify or semester and even semester so let me click this is uh, summer 2020 so now you can enter your uh, class name for instance my class name so is say demo okay demo say uh, 301 okay so this is my course code of the class so let me click uh, create a new class right so now your course code is already displayed here class name demo 301 and uh, you can specify the yeah here you can simply say uh, course name so demo class demo class 3 okay doesn't matter this is say my course name maybe like uh, cs uh, okay 2001 maybe like then you have to specify the uh, uh, number of students that you are going to enroll in your class for example let me type uh, my class is going to be like 50 and then the term is already there okay and uh, now you need to click this uh, button to uh, to affirm that you belong to your class uh, your college okay so i click this i i am affiliated to bishop ibe college okay as per the psr terms and then you can click uh, this create class button okay well so we just created our uh, uh created our uh, class okay and then uh, if you want you can go back yeah just hold on uh, okay right now uh, you have to first enroll yourself as the lead instructor for the course okay so you can see there are three different options uh, join as student join as the teaching assistant join as professor so i am the lead instructor so let me join as the professor and uh, it's asking you your email for example i specify my email id rajkumar@bhc.edu.in and then i confirm it and then 
yeah so i have enrolled uh, me as the lead instructor now you can see the very big screen so you need to be patient and uh, you have to fill up uh, these different things so for instance you might see there are so many options i am going to tell you one by one and uh, yeah the first option says uh, you confirm your your basic class information so you can specify the starting date for your course okay suppose if your start date is like uh, uh, june 1 you can specify okay so then if you it says that instructor uh, self sign up okay uh, for example if you you can enable this one so if you enable what happens uh, you allow other instructors and uh, students to sign up themselves so by default it is disable that means you don't want other instructors to sign up themselves similarly other students to sign up themselves that means you are going to invite them by way of sending email only then they will be able to sign up for the course okay then now you can add other instructors and students to your class and uh, look at this this is uh, a link you can share this link by by sending an email okay and uh, you can also specify additional security okay by specifying this access uh, code that means it's like a sign up code in addition to the email uh, and this code will be sent to students and other instructors so they have to provide this uh, additional access code for sign up then you can invite other instructors you can just paste the email ids of those instructors here okay and then you can click this button add instructors so those instructors will be added to your class and next you have to enroll all your students you have to copy and paste the email ids of uh, your students here probably assume i have already saved my email ids of my students okay as a word file or excel file or simply a text file you copy and then you can paste it you can paste uh, uh, the email id of students here and then you can click this button okay so for example let me just uh, uh, add a couple of students so rajkumar data science uh, like uh, emails yeah yeah email id so i think i have a couple of email ids of uh, data science students for example i copy those email ids control c and then i paste it here okay so i have pasted all my students email ids and then i can click add a students okay right so i have added all my students okay to my course page and i will come back to the question answer uh, setting and then similarly other things okay and uh, once i added uh, uh, my students and now i have to send them uh, one message okay so instead of using or asking those students to uh, enter into the psr so this is the feature so there is a already pre built uh, message okay so it says like introduce psa to your students okay you just click add post okay if you click this button add post then email will be sent to the students so that uh, students can use their mobile phones they can use their laptop uh, to really uh, look at the message and then sign up themselves okay so this is the uh, initial setup for your course and uh, yeah now with this basic steps i want to introduce you all other features of uh, your course so click so my course is there cs 2001 i can click okay and uh, 
you can uh, click uh, this uh, setup you can click qa question answer okay and then okay it's a front page of your course and uh, there are other resources for example if you click this resources yeah it shows a couple of features the first thing is like uh, syllabus so this is a button to add your syllabus okay if you click this button it will take you to your folder directory assume the assuming that you have already uh, created your syllabus by way of like it's available as a word file uh, microsoft word file or anything you can select that file okay so your syllabus is already uploaded into your psa page and then if you click this course information it will display you two features one is description you can describe uh, uh, your course for example you can describe what is this course uh, in few lines okay description and then you can click uh, save button and uh, then you can specify other uh, information for example you want to specify uh, the location of your lecture okay what is the lecture hall you can specify a location of your lecture okay uh, location is uh, cs building uh, class uh, say 205 room number 205 okay similarly you can add uh, uh, for example you can specify your time class time uh, my lecture time i can say it's uh, monday monday from say uh, 10 to uh, 10 to 11 am and so on you can specify all those things so this is about the general information in addition to the description uh, and about your syllabus okay and then now you can click this stop for example already your name is uh, added your instructor name and uh, you can specify okay Uh, the time date and other resources by default uh, you can include the four different kinds of resources for your class for example you can uh, create a homeworks homework documents and you can archive your homework solutions and then you can add your lecture notes all your slides all your handouts you can also uh, for example if you have other resources like uh, videos audios some data files everything you can include that so simply uh, suppose you need to uh, click uh, this button okay then you need to select the file that you want to upload it okay and uh, similarly other files you can select it suppose if you feel that uh, these are the four different kinds but uh, i have some more components in my course for example i want to add assignments i want to add a project okay so all these other components can also be created so just here you see there is a button called edit uh, resource section you click this okay so this page will allow you to create additional resources and uh, say for example so here i want to add another section called assignments okay so here you type assignments and then click this button add a section so the new section assignment is added and uh, now if you want to associate a date and time for assignments for example i want to announce assignment 1 on this particular date assignment 2 on this particular date of course you need to select the feature so this column add a date will help you to include date for your section for example here for homeworks yes i need to add a date for every homework okay similarly for lecture notes yes i need to announce slides of lecture 1 on this date slides of lecture 2 on this date so that's why you have this uh, check box so you can click and then you can unclick okay so that those sections will be uh, added with uh, the day okay so you can also specify the due dates that is possible and this is how you can add as many sections as you want suppose if you want to delete couple of sections that is possible so here for under every section there is a delete button you can click this delete button to delete any section that you want to delete okay so this is how you can just manage your sections so you can come back
yeah so so now you have learned how to just add a syllabus to your course how to include other course related information how to include uh, instructors those instructors names will also appear because already you have sent uh, the email ids to those instructors and then I have, we have also learned how to include or how to create upload different uh, resources under these different headings so i guess uh, uh, this uh, uh, explanation is more easy to follow and now let us move on to other uh, features of piasa so here you might see there is another uh, uh, menu called manage class so if you click that uh, menu manage class here you will see some of the uh, items already we created you can fill up the remaining things for example already we created a course number course name and uh, the start date okay and uh, the class link is there sign up link and uh, this we don't got to manually send because already we uh, included all the email ids and then we submitted the uh, predefined message though so the message will reach the other instructors and to other students so this is the class link this means that uh, you can just select this link and you can paste it in your the college website in your personal web pages of your university you can also copy this link and then put it in your facebook page you can put it into your personal website that is possible so that is the use of this class link and already we have learned uh, it's uh, whether to enable or disable instructors uh, self sign up and uh, suppose this class status active and inactive it will help you to make the class inactive for example the semester is over so i don't want students to get into our class page so what i should do i should make the current class inactive so you can click that so the resources and other question answers will not be accessible to other students and uh, you can also schedule a lock time that means uh, you want the class page to be inactive for certain time that is also possible and uh, question answer setting so most powerful feature of piasa again i'll come back and uh, similarly the configure class folders again i will come back and already explain you how to enroll teaching assistants and professors already i told you how to enroll your students we enrolled uh, like around 15 students we created uh, 50 as the enrollment but uh, currently i have enrolled only 15 students one by and uh, whenever new students come then i can just co collect those email ids and then i can add them to the list so new list will be automatically created and those students will be invited okay and uh, yeah and this one enable uh, group based discussion and uh, this is another pretty interesting feature of piasa for example uh, so in a particular course so we offer different uh, projects assume we create like uh, 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 50 students i divide them into 10 groups and i am assigning one project for each group so each group will have five students many times i need to communicate to the students of a particular project so i want to send them i want to communicate i want to send them email i want to give instructors i want to enable only the students within the project group to ask questions themselves so that i can answer only to that group so that is called a group based discussion so you can create so many groups and you can select students okay and uh, those discussions will be allowed only among this particular group so i can create a group name i can say group 1 group 2 group 3 and so on i can simply give the group uh, preference and then the number will be automatically attached to that for example i say group and then here is already one okay so when you say n and then you can simply say right so this is how you can just automatically label or if you want a custom label 
okay you can also specify say for instance i don't want to identify them as group 1 group 2 group 3 i want to give identify them by their project name i can specify the project name for example one particular project is say like uh, uh, java this is one group java group other one is like uh, say php group and so on i can give the names and uh, then uh, page settings will tell you the visibility of uh, the page okay so how many items to be visible for example 10 or 50 or more or everything you can select the visibilities okay and uh, now let us come back to the uh, important feature of uh, piasa that is called uh, qa question answer setting okay so this is the page for uh, the uh, posting okay so this is a button to create a new post okay and so on so before uh, creating a new post uh, let us first uh, configure our uh, qa so let me click uh, this uh, manage class once again and then come back to the qa settings so please uh, look at uh, carefully so Uh, this uh, question answer setting is a uh, most vital thing so the first one says uh, posting anonymously so what is this posting anonymously so if you enable this button radio button so the students will be anonymous to other students and also to instructors many times you know students are already shy so they want to ask questions but because they are shy they are afraid of the questions being wrong so they want to ask questions anonymously so they will post questions but we don't want to see them who this particular student is so that is the feature of anonymity so that you can enable if you disable that Uh, students are anonymous only to the instructors so instructors can see but student cannot so it's anonymous only to instructors so that is the feature of this uh, anonymity and then uh, students will be allowed to submit a private post so you allow students to to send a private post only to you only to instructors and that is possible if you disable one second so if you disable only instructors can send a private post students will not be allowed to submit private post so this is another interesting feature that you want to enable or disable to students and then Uh, syntax highlighting just ignore that is for html formatting and uh, next one is uh, student uh, polls whether you want to enable them or disable them so poll is something like a question that is being raised by student or instructor thereby you always simply count how many students agree with this question how many students don't agree with this question this is something like we ask a particular question we ask our students to raise up their hands whether you agree just raise up and whether you disagree raise up so that is the poll so you can conduct online polls using piasa so if you enable both students and instructors can conduct polls if you disable only instructors can conduct polls so that is the feature of a student poll and then uh, this uh, tagging instructors to post so whether you allow or you disable uh, student other instructors uh, whose names can be tagged within the post uh, that means you allow it or not so that's another interesting feature and then uh, duplicate uh, post suggestions that means like uh, when a student uh, tries to ask question and uh, we want to first ensure that that no other similar questions already exist and suppose if 
there is a question very similar question that is already being asked and that is available then student will not be allowed to uh, to submit a new question which resembles to the already existing question so that is called duplicate post so whether you enable or disable you can decide that for example uh, you can out of by default right it is disabled uh, and suppose if your class enrollment is very high you can really uh, enable it and then timer is another powerful feature of uh, psr and uh, we are as instructors we are always busy and suppose we don't want our students to keep posting questions so that we need to answer uh, immediately you can delay your answers you can delay your answers uh, according to your convenience maybe you delay your answers so that the question can be answered by other students just you follow it up if other students didn't answer this particular question then you can jump into and then you can start answering so that is the feature of uh, uh, this timer delay many times you know you go to your class complete your lecture you come back to your office you see 10 students are outside standing in front of your office with a question so at times we feel like oh god just now i am back from my lecture and there are 10 students out uh, waiting outside in my room asking for doubts so piyasa is going to rescue that so you ask piyasa you ask your students to post their questions uh, using piyasa platform so that you can answer that so uh, suppose i want to uh, enable this uh, timer delay okay so that it will show you how long you can a delay for example you want to delay 30 minutes or 2 hours 4 hours or 8 hours or 24 hours you can select your delay time and accordingly uh, you will be notified whether it's time for you to answer the questions so that is what uh, your question answering uh, feature now you have uh, learned uh, already Uh, how to include resources already i told you how to include resources how to add a syllabus how to add other resources how to create a class and then invite your students how to post and so on now let us uh, see how to create posts let's come back to this page i click this qa and uh, this page is shown so now there is a button called a new post you can click this button yeah when i click this button this uh, posting page comes and i told you in the beginning there are three different types of posting one is question okay second is note and third is a poll right question is a question and uh, you want students to answer okay and note is uh, something like uh, an information uh, that you want to send to your students but it does not require any answer from uh, your student and then third one is a poll so i want to conduct a online poll or in class poll so what is in class poll and uh, you you just uh, type uh, a question and uh, you ask your students to use their mobile phone and then to click their answers whether to agree or not okay so that is the use of this uh, in class poll or it could be online poll where you can set deadline for example if you come down you can specify you can type the poll question here okay and then uh uh you can uh set the answer type whether student should click only one answer or student can click multiple answers so that is a feature to control that one and you can specify the closing date how far student how far you will wait for the answer it could be uh, after two days or after one day or it's already immediately you can say always open okay you can specify the closing date okay and then uh, you can control when the results should be shown to the students okay and this feature will help you and uh, this is how you can specify you can control your in class poll or online poll and uh, below that uh, there are so many different folders like homework 1 homework 2 project exam logistics and other so whenever you 
click a question or student clicks the question whether you click a note or student clicks note whatever it is doesn't matter okay and uh, this particular uh, new post or this page is uh, you as instructors you use and similarly students students will also log into and then they will use okay so the questions will be automatically archived into any one of these folders okay so that's how psa classifies your question whether the question is related to homework 1 whether the question is related to homework 2 so it automatically classifies your question into any of these different folders and this is compulsory thereby later you can make an statistics about how many questions were asked related to homework 1 how many questions were asked related to homework 2 you can really classify them okay so that is the advantage of uh, the uh, folders so it's a it's a mandatory you have to click this folder and also you can control whether your post whether your question is to be sent to entire class or a group of students that is also possible for example you want to disseminate this post only to one particular group that is possible so this two radio buttons will control that okay and uh, that is how you will create a new post maybe a new question or new note or uh, on online poll or in class poll doesn't matter and uh, here this search box will allow you to search already available posts so below that you see so many posts that are already created and similarly whenever students create new posts and those posts will be archived in this particular in this particular section and also you can view whether a particular question is already being answered or not so here there is a settings you click that so here you see so many different options like whether you want to see all those uh, questions that are not read unread okay unresolved okay and due for answer archived so many things you can also check the posts given by instructors and so on so it will help you to really filter out the necessary posts uh, that has that are been already shared sent by students and answers already being given by the instructors so that is the advantage of this uh, search button and then many times you know uh, so this uh, qa will help you to make offline question answering you might feel like can i have a live question answer session within the class inside the class yes piasa will allow you to conduct a live question answering session so there is a button here live qa you click this button yeah so it says yes start live q and a now so when you click this button Uh, the live question answering session will start so student uh, students can submit their questions okay and then you can answer other students can answer so that is the feature of this live qa okay so this is about uh, the configuring question answering session and also conducting the qa session so let me come back to manage class once again there is another interesting feature that i want to introduce you now if you come back and then there is yeah piasa network settings so this is the final very interesting feature so what is this network settings you know many times uh, you you offer a particular course and you want to make your course to go global and there are maybe 100000 professors all around the world offering the same course so you want to network with them you want your students to get into the uh, relationship with other students from other universities that is possible so not only that so you want the uh, recruiters to have a look at your students so we want all of our students to be identified by different recruiters and that is possible that is how once you create your course then you are part of the psr network so 
you can specify a couple of uh, keywords or a couple of important topics that you are teaching a particular course. So you can list them. You can assign those keywords. You just uh, assign a couple of keywords related to your course so that recruiters will go through that keywords and they will be able to understand like you have covered these important topics in your course and obviously uh, your students might be a better pick for my industry. Also, you can select 10% of the top students from a class so that those 10% of students will be visible to the recruiters. Suppose if you feel like, no, I don't want to expose only top students, so let me disable everything so that everyone will have an equal opportunity for employment. That is also possible. So that is the pretty interesting feature of this PSR network. So once you create your class, you are part of your PSR network. So you help your students to land up jobs, to land up internships by part of their PSR network. Okay, so uh, this is about uh, my live demo about uh, how to create, uh, uh, how to sign up for your university, how to get into the Piazza page and how to create a new course, uh, new class, and then how to assign course number, course name, and then enrollment, how to enroll students, how to enroll other instructors, how to invite my students, and so on. And then I also explained you how to uh, archive all your resources to your class and how to configure your question answer session, how to make live question answering session as well. So this is the complete uh, walkthrough about uh, Piazza. So just uh, you need to spend another 15 minutes or 20 minutes, uh, practice yourself and uh, create a new course and then practice yourself within uh, 15 to 20 minutes, you'll be able to uh, easily uh, navigate to these different uh, options. So Piazza is a very simple GUI, graphical user interface. Uh, it's very easy to navigate. It's very to use uh, for everyone, not necessarily for someone who is tech savvy, any professor. You might be a professor of uh, humanities or basic sciences, applied sciences, or engineering, it doesn't matter. And uh, it won't take more than 20 to 30 minutes to master Piazza. So let me come back to my slides. So, well, and uh, suppose uh, if you want to listen to uh, some more videos, uh, these are a couple of tutorial videos already created by Piazza. So I have given them as hyperlinks. You click that hyperlink and uh, you'll be taken into Piazza and then you can listen to these videos. It's a very simple uh, video, maybe like two minutes uh, to not more than five minutes time. You can understand how to set up your class, how to announce uh, uh, your class to students, okay? How to post uh, uh, questions, notes and everything, and then how to organize your resources, okay? And how to introduce students. So students have to go to psr.com and then sign up themselves and then select your course. And uh, uh, whenever uh, we look at some software product app like Piazza, and immediately many of us will uh, have this uh, product like Google Classroom. So Google Classroom is again a popular uh, course management uh, system. And uh, I was using Google Classroom around uh, three years before, uh, for the past uh, one to one and a half years, I use only Piazza. And uh, the reason is like uh, Google Classroom is a passive uh, classroom, that means Use your Google Classroom and then you reach out to your students. You share your resources, you schedule your lecture, and then okay, you archive, you announce your class. That's it. It's a passive, uh, passive technology to reach out to our students to conduct online classes. But that is the first level. So what is the second level? Second level is like it's not simply a passive. How to enable my student to learn by themselves? from other students in addition to the instructors. Also, how to really archive all those knowledge of different questions and answers so that those knowledge should be created, maintained, 
for the future students. So that is a second level of uh, teaching, I would say. So in that sense, I appreciate Piazza as the better product for my regular classes. So what it is, it complements my traditional teaching. I go to my classroom and uh, I do my traditional uh, teaching and uh, to complement that I use Piazza. And suppose if you think that uh, my class is completely online. So uh, does PSR support this online streaming? No, PSR does not support online streaming. So you need to use other online streaming softwares. Probably you can use Google Meet, you can use uh, 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 say Skype, you can use say WebEx, you can use Zoom, any free live streaming uh, classes for streaming for your classes online. So uh, this is a powerful thing about the Piazza and this is how your Google Classroom and Piazza compare to each other. And uh, before closing, I have this uh, tips for you, how to make your Piazza learning effective. Uh, one thing is, so you need to discourage uh, email communications. All of us receive tens of emails every day from our students. So you have to discourage email communication. You have to direct your students only to use Piazza to ask questions to you. And uh, secondly, also you need to motivate your students so that they ask questions in Piazza. So once they ask questions in Piazza, other students can edit their questions. Other students can answer those questions. You also answer those questions. Other TAs can answer the questions. Other instructors, they can answer the question. So obviously, knowledge is created day by day. So once knowledge is created, the knowledge is useful to other students of your class and also students from the future years. And then another tip is like, don't answer your questions immediately. You wait for five hours, you wait for half a day, you wait for one day, so that other students will be motivated to answer the questions. Finally, if not, then you can answer the question. And final important thing, don't log off your Piazza. You keep your Piazza always on, so that whenever you open your laptop and your Piazza will pop up you the message, and then you can also uh, have a uh, tip of what's going on uh, for your class offline. So these are some of the tips and tricks used by uh, different professors who are already using PSA for their lectures. So we have come to end of this uh, presentation. So uh, I am here to just answer a couple of questions. Uh, you can also ask questions. You can type your questions in the chat box. So if I'm unable to answer all the questions, again, I can answer those questions offline by looking at your uh, chart uh, text. Thank Hello, Siddhi Professor, you can start. Hi. Yes. Video, video, you get to. Uh, yeah, anyway. yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Sir, thank you very much for your uh, nice presentation. Dear participants, you all will agree with me. If you have, uh, sir, uh, you want the questions to be answered uh, now? Yes, sir. If uh, uh, if some questions, uh, oh. yeah, definitely we can answer now. Okay. If some some uh, professors they want okay. to ask questions. Okay. Durai, Doctor Durai, you can open yes, up. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, sir, actually, the, uh, on behalf of YouTube viewer, I would like to ask some questions, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, any specific format 
in uploading research materials. Eh? So you mean uh, how to upload uh, resources? Uh, resource material, material. What is the, is there any format sir to upload the uh, resource material? CSV file, uh, I think. Sir, okay. Is, uh, huh? Yes, yes, sir. So actually, uh, uh, you can include uh, uh, any type of files. For example, you can include uh, Microsoft Word documents, Excel sheet. You can include images. You can include pictures, you can include a video file, audio file, nothing. So PSA supports all sort of different file formats. Are you clear? Okay, okay. Okay, thank you, sir. So one, uh, one more from uh, Zoom we were. To add a student in Google Classroom, they should have a Gmail account. Is there is any specific like that? Uh, yes, sir. So actually, uh, that's a downside of uh, Google Classroom. So Piazza will accept any uh, any email uh, uh, type. It could be Gmail, it could be like uh, Hotmail, uh, Microsoft Mail, no problem. Yahoo Mail doesn't matter. Uh, it will accept any sort of email formats. It could be your domain email. So everything, all different email formats are supported in Piazza. Thank you, thank you. So one more from our Zoom viewer. Uh, can we use uh, Piazza without official email? Email is it? Yes, sir. So, so initially, uh, Piazza expected you to have your official email ID for uh, sign up to sign up your uh, your college, and and it's not necessary now. Sir, so one more. Is uh, Piazza similar to uh, Microsoft Meet? Uh, so Microsoft Meet is again an online streaming platform. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. So. Oh uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah. So, but no, no product supports this uh, question answer uh, feature. So. Uh, actu uh, yeah. Actually, from the our uh, we were Zoom we were, they asked me which one is the best, uh, maybe better. Uh, they asking suggest. Yeah, so usually, sir, so many universities, many professors will use more than one technology. So, for example, they will use a Microsoft uh, Team feature to live stream their lectures. And then they will use uh, Piazza for maintaining the online question answering sessions. So, some people, they will use, uh, say, Cisco's uh, WebEx to live stream their lectures. In addition to that, they will use Piazza. Some people, they will use a free thing, like uh, just a Google uh, uh, Google uh, chat feature. Some people will use uh, Skype. So you can use more than one technology to complement each other. Because right now, Piazza does not support live streaming. Thank you, sir. Is it clear, sir? Ah, yes, sir. sir. Yeah. Uh, these questions from arise from our Zoom viewer as well as YouTube. Yeah, my pleasure, sir. You. Sir, you can start. Yeah, Dr. Dorey, you can uh, unmute uh, Madam Madam Principal. Yeah, 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 sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. Or uh, she told she has meeting with the secretary. No, no, I'm, no I'm here, I'm here. Okay, 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 madam. Okay, madam. Thank you. Yeah, madam. actually yeah. what happened, I did have a meeting and okay. uh, Professor's uh, talk was so wonderful. I couldn't move out of my laptop. Professor Rajkumar, you gave a wonderful walkthrough. And uh, I don't think uh, anybody can make this as simple as you did for our uh, viewers. And we are very, very happy uh, we had this session. Uh, but uh, I was uh, waiting for you to talk about this uh, round robin uh, slicing te uh, technology because uh, when too many students are around and uh, when the waiting time is more, uh, and then too many questions from the same side, we could avoid all that, isn't it? They have this, uh, the, the round, round robin uh, slice technology sort of. Could you uh, enlighten me on that? Uh, yes, ma'am. I've heard of uh, slice, but I've not tried a, a round robin method, of course. So it's another way of just uh, ensuring that every student uh, gets opportunity Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah. I thought. No, I was wondering whether is that available in the, the format that you have demonstrated right now. 
no, no, ma'am. I don't no. think so. PSR so because I, I think that, that process is in PSR TS, I, if I remember uh, right. A TS is another advanced uh, uh, one. And then I think this round robin uh, system is available in TS. Okay, but uh, currently uh, in my installation, uh, I don't see that particular feature. But anyway, as you mentioned, so I will just look at uh, other installations where a round robin feature is already included in uh, PSR. Yeah, it because otherwise be all students may not necessarily participate. And then, uh, you know, and there's a, a big, uh, one problem with PSI, I think, is waiting time. Sometimes it happens and uh, the waiting time can be reduced, you know, if this they have this round robin uh, technology. That's what, uh, I mean, I heard. So I thought I can get more uh, information from your side. Maybe uh, subsequently you'll come across these issues. Uh, but anyway, I want to personally thank you for that wonderful session. I'm sure the viewers would have had a wonderful time. We should also thank uh, Chitty Babu for uh, such uh, nice, excellent, uh, uh, you know, uh, preparations that he had made so that everybody will be uh, uh, really happy to have undergone these sessions. Because most of the time, like I had a meeting uh, with PWD today at 12 o'clock. And I was just sitting in your session and I couldn't, I wanted to really see through what you're really saying. So that should be the case for everybody. And uh, uh, I think this is the kind of service what we do for our teachers because um, they, as I told you, you, if you don't learn all these things in course of time, we may not be able to be in track with the students. I hope you will agree with me. Yes, yes, ma'am, sure. Definitely. Thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. Dear, dear participants, we are coming to the concluding, concluding session of uh, what of thanks proposing vote of thanks. Say it is a pleasure to propose vote of thanks uh, to uh, our resource person and principal and also the participants because uh, the program has been designed and delivered in such a way that the even the complicated thing could be understood in a simple way. A good teacher is one who simplifies even complicated thing. Sir, you are uh, such a good teacher who have you have made us understand the piazza it seems as though it is tailor made for us as you said the units can be shared in every course so in colleges this is the routine case so many of us share the units and we will not face problem with the piazza it is also uh, teacher friendly student friendly very easy and uh, you have uh, really uh, been very resourceful, informative. You have enlightened us in such a way that we have been motivated to immediately take up Piazza to our uh, students. That may be the reason why you have been invited by many of the uh, uh, leading books, Springer Verlag, Germany, IGI, Global USA, and other uh, books as editor, you have edited uh, several books there. Uh, and your popular book on Java programming by Pearson is noteworthy. And uh, <clears throat> you have been editorial member in several of the leading journals. So we are all, all the participants are uh, blessed to listen to your uh, uh, lecture demonstration, which is uh, very lucid and very easy to understand, sir. Any doubts, uh, I hope uh, you will be able to answer in future. Um, your, I think your email ID can be shared uh, by uh, me with your permission. I can uh, share your email ID so that they can uh, uh, seek your, uh, uh, seek clarification from you, sir. So we thank on behalf of our college and the participants, you, we thank you very much uh, for you sparing your time and sharing your knowledge. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. I thank my principal. I thank my principal, I should say, uh, who has been always echoed as proactive principal inside the campus because even before we start any work, she will start the homework, finish and everything she will keep ready. So such a dynamic principal who has served the various colleges and uh, who has been instrumental in transforming the college and uh, making it a very digital friendly also we should say. 
So the principal is profusely thanked for her uh, valuable time with this uh, webinar uh, or a virtual FTP, we should uh, call. The virtual FTP name is uh, very catchy. I should uh, thank you, madam. I thank all the participants of uh, our own college, other colleges from other states and universities. There are many participants from universities also, sir, because uh, as resource person wanted, it should be thrown open to many colleges and universities or whatever it is, so that it will uh, uh, reach the uh, students. Sir, I thank you once again, thank the principal and thank the participants. I thank the technological support extended by Dr. Durai Arasan. And I thank last but not least my family members who have uh, managed to accommodate me during this uh, preparation for the webinar. Sir, thank you. Thank you all. So I would like to extend uh, my thanks as well from my side. So on behalf of Bishop Biba College, Trichrapalli, I take this opportunity to thank uh, the principal. Uh, uh, she is kind enough uh, to stay back uh, throughout the session, though she had so many commitments uh, since morning, and uh, so it really it, uh, motivates us like uh, teachers. Uh, so whenever higher officials uh, uh, listen to you, when really it's uh, amazing uh, to know that uh, she is uh, present throughout the session. I also thank uh, you, Dr. Chitty Babu sir. So you have been so dynamic uh, in making the arrangements uh, so lovely. It's amazing. Uh, also, I thank your IT team. So it's not easy to live stream uh just connecting a few persons are very easy but if you want to scale to like uh, 100 500 1000 is really very tough so your it team has done a great job in uh, ensuring uh, seamless uh, uh, live streaming of uh, the fdp onto uh, zoom as well as uh, through youtube but also i thank the participants so really whenever uh, we organize workshops, so, so we see a huge number of professors, they are showing a lot of interest. So uh, really, so thank you for your time. Thank you for your energy to stay back for 90 minutes. So I planned for 60 minutes, but uh, somehow it took like 90 minutes to, uh, to cover. But anyhow, even though it was slightly longer, so I have made you to really uh, be familiar, be comfortable with the uh, PSR platform. So it's easy for you to use your PSR platform for your uh, classes that's going to come in a few months down the line. So on behalf of yes. uh, our principal, Dr. D. Paul Dayabaran and everyone from Bishop Weber College, I thank you once again. Have a good day. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you, participants. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Siti Babu. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all, sir. Can I wind up? Uh, yes. Yes. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. All. Thank you, sir.